The subject for this evening is in response to Brother Swagat, in response to Brother Swagat, Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Bible, in response to Brother Swagat last night, at question time, somebody posed a question to him, where he was asked whether there was any mention of Muhammad وسلم, in the Christian Bible. And Brother Swagat, according to his understanding, knowledge, he said, Most every religion tries to find the Bible and somewhere in their teachings and their beliefs. And so does the Quran. It tries to say that it is mentioned in the Bible or Muhammad is mentioned in the Bible. But uh, Muhammad is not mentioned in the Old Testament. He said, no, there is nothing in the Bible about Muhammad. Now, the format as it was, if you were there last night, was that questions were put to one speaker at a time. One to Didat, one to Swagat. One to Didat, one to Swagat. And they had to respond to those questions. It was not there at question time a debate between Swagat and Didat. Can you see? So I couldn't say, excuse me, you know, he says, look, there is something there and start debating with him on the point. That was not the occasion. However, I am now responding to that question, to Brother Swagat's statement that there is nothing in the Bible about Muhammad. And initially when I started talking about the subject of what the Bible says about Muhammad, I didn't know at the beginning and for a very long time, I didn't know that the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was mentioned by name in the Bible. Mentioned by name. Learned. Many will say, look where? Brother Swagat has been through the Bible, as he says, countless number of times. Certain verses, he's mentioning his books, he's read it countless number of times. I have read the Bible through many, many, many times. And others such as I have read it many more times, much more educated than I could ever be, understanding both Hebrew and Greek. And with this countless number of reading, the man doesn't see it. How can that be? I said, you see, what has happened is this. First, that Muhammad is mentioned by name in the original scriptures, the Old Testament, according to Christian authorities, was preserved in the Hebrew language. And the New Testament in Greek scriptures, Greek language. In the Old Testament, in the Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16, in the Hebrew language, it reads, I'm sure Brother Swagat would appreciate it because I thought I heard him say that he knows Hebrew and he knows Greek. In the Hebrew language, it says, Hikko mamittakim vi kullo muhammadim zehdudi vi zehrei bainat Jerusalem. Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16. The word muhammadim is muhammad im. Im, I am Im. Im is a plural of respect in Hebrew. You see the first verse of the Bible, book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 1. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The word God in Hebrew there is Elohim. In Hebrew, El, El stands for God. Ella stands for God. Elohim is a plural form to say with all respect and reverence. Plural of respect. In all Eastern languages, including Arabic and Hebrew, there are two types of plurals. In my own mother tongue, we have plural of respect as well as of numbers. In Urdu, plural of respect as well as numbers. You see, in the Quran also we find the very same thing. 
like the verse Allah says, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun. That it is for us to send down the revelation and it is for us to protect it. Who is this us? Ask any Muslim. Who is this us? Is Allah, Jibreel and Muhammad like Father, Son and Holy Ghost? No, no. But is us, who is us? When we are told in the Holy Quran, Qul huwa Allahu ahad, say he is Allah the one and only. Here he's talking about us. No Arab Christian has ever asked the Muslim, I said the Arab Christian, has ever asked the Muslim, who is this us? Because he knows in his language, there are two types of plurals, plural of numbers and plural of respect. This us is like in royal proclamations, you have plural of respect. We have decreed, says the queen. We. Who is this we? Not she and her husband and her, her son. No, no, no. It's standing for herself. Out of respect. Plural. So Elohim is a plural of respect. Im. El is God. Ella is God. Elohim is more than one of respect. But our Christian brethren, you see, when they want to prove the Holy Trinity, that God Almighty is to be found in three persons, three personalities in a trinity. So they say this as stands for Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, because it is in the plural. So admittedly, it is in the plural. But if it stands for gods, that's a correct translation. But there is not a Bible on earth with the dozens of different versions. There's not a single Bible on earth where it says, in the beginning, gods created the heavens and the earth. I said, why are you so dishonest? If it is plural, why don't you put plural? You say, in the beginning, gods created the heavens and the earth. Why do you say God? You say, if it's plural, say so. That there were gods, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and these three put together, they created the heavens and the earth. No. Ask any Jew. This is his book. Ask him, what is this im? He said, look, in my language, this is the plural of respect. God is one, but out of respect we speak like that. Im. He says, Muhammad im. Muhammad im. Plural of respect. The word is there in the Hebrew language. In the original, what they call original, it's there. But they have translated that in English as altogether lovely. So this beloved of mine is altogether lovely, says Solomon. When you read altogether lovely, you can't associate with the word Muhammad. You read it a thousand times, altogether lovely, altogether lovely. Or let's say in another language, the praised one, the praised one. Muhammad means the praised one. But he said the praised one, the praised one. You can't think that he's talking about Muhammad. Though Muhammad means the praised one. You have no right to translate names of people. Anybody. Your name should be retained. Mr. Black is Mr. Black, though he's white. He's a European, a Caucasian. But you can't say Mr. Uh, Mr. Abu uh, uh, Aswad. You can't say in Arabic, he's Mr. Aswad. He is Mr. Black. Here I say in Urdu, I say he is Mr. Black hair. I can't say he is Mr. Kala. You know? It's ridiculous. I have no right to translate names of people. Now, we say, when we analyze, but to give you further proof, that this sickness has been very common among the translators of the Bible, more especially in Christendom. You see, they have been translating names like, for example, Messiah. Messiah. Jesus was the Messiah, Hebrew word, Messiah. In Arabic, Masih, translated Christ. How does that come about? How do we call him Christ? I said, you see, the Hebrew word Messiah or Masih means to anoint, to rub over. You know, when we Muslims, when we go for Salat, prayer, we make wudu, ablution. And in the part of our ablution, besides washing the hands, brushing the teeth, washing the face, washing the feet, 
the arms up to the elbows. We wet our hands and we rub them over. This way. Every Muslim does that. If he's particularly with his prayers five times a day, he does that. Every time he makes wudu, he after washing everything, he wets his hands and he rubs them over. Like this, like that, and like that. What do you call that? Masa. See, we say masa. Masa comes from the Hebrew word. Same word, masa. Masa, masaha in Arabic and Hebrew means to rub, to massage, to anoint. And the person who is so done, we call him Messiah, Masih, on whom this was done. Priests and kings were anointed, means rubbed over with holy oil or holy water. So from today you are our priest, our imam, or from today you become our ruler. See, we say like the coronation ceremony, you have the gowning ceremony, now you have the anointing ceremony. That's what it means, anointed. So, Messiah, in Greek, translated into Greek, is Christos. Christos means anointed. And they take off the os. Christos is a bit lengthy, so you get left with Christ. Christ means the anointed one, the one who is anointed. Priests and kings were anointed. So this is the title of Jesus, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. Jesus again was not his name. His name was classical Yeshua. Esau, Isa. Okay? That was his name. In the Hebrew language, when he was born, his mother didn't give him the name Jesus because there's no such word as Jesus in Hebrew. J, the J is not there. It's Isus, Esau, Isa. Yeshua. Classical Yeshua. But they have a, a habit. The Western, he has a sickness for adding J's where there are no J's. They have what is called a J sickness. So Yusuf, there's a Joseph. Yaqub, there's a Jacob. See? <laughs> Johanna, there's a John. Where there is no J, they put a J. Latinizing the le le words, as if it sounds like Western. This is a sickness. All subject people have, but more particularly, the Christians had it. They add J's. It says, Yahuwah. So the Jehovah's Witness was Jehovah. They put a J with this no J. Wherever. This is, I say, in, in religion, they do jaywalking. In my country, you can be charged for jaywalking. Jaywalking means, you know, you cross the street, you know, where there's not pedestrian crossing. There's supposed to be certain pedestrian crossing in our main roads. And if you cross anywhere else, and the police on the other side, he can catch you and he can give you a ticket for what is called jaywalking. The Christians have jaywalked into people's names. Anywhere, everywhere. <laughs> so now, Jesus Christ, in his second coming, we believe that he's coming again. What for? We are told in the Gospel of St. Matthew why he's going to come again. He says, on that day, Many will say to me on that day, when he is coming, second coming, say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name do many mighty works? Didn't we do all these things in your name? We built hospitals, co colleges, universities, we looked after the poor. Didn't we do all these things in your name? And we cast out devils, we healed the sick, and the blind, and the lepers. Didn't we do it in your name? Jesus says, then will I profess unto them, these guys, these people who say, we did all these things in your name. Lord, Lord, we did it in your name. Jesus says, then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Get away out of my sight. Foot sack. Get away, you rubbish. I don't even know you. I'm asking the Christians. He said, look, why should he tell you foot sack? That's a, a local term. That means get away. Why would he tell you, get out of my sight? When he did all these things in his name. He's not going to tell the Hindus, get away, foot sack. He's not going to tell the Muslims, get away, foot sack. He's not going to tell uh, the Jews, get away, foot sack. But he's going to tell you, the Christian, those who say, Lord, Lord. I say, I want to know why. Why would he tell you, foot sack? Answer that. And no answer forthcoming. Why would he tell you? Not the Jews, not the Hindus, not the Muslims, but you, his followers, and who have done this 
Miracles. We have worked miracles. And he's going to tell you, get out. So I say, he's coming to do a certain job of work. But in his second coming, let's say we recognize him. That this is Jesus in his second coming. And you shout. You cry out. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. I say, he won't even turn and look at you. Because he never heard the word Jesus. And he never heard the word Christ in his life. Because these are new words you have concocted. He says, he saw, Yeshua, you say Jesus. He doesn't know. He says, I don't know who you're shouting for. <laughs> so they translated the word Messiah into Christ. Christ he never heard. Peter, Peter, his leading disciple. You see, before he parted, he says, Peter, feed my, feed my flock. Feed my land, feed my sheep, meaning look after the others. You are, you know, the elder most. You are the most mature, the best qualified to look after the others. Peter, his name was Simon, Simon Peter. Heard the name? Peter. Common name among the Christians. I said, you know, Peter never heard the word Peter in his life. You didn't know that? You see, his name was Simon. And Jesus at one stage, you know, because of his stubbornness, he was a very stubborn, you know, and militant, like the Irishman. The Irishman. They're fighting people, spirited people. So he was one of that type among his disciples, the most militant. So Jesus describes that quality as a Simon, thou art Kephas. And on this rock I'll build my church, thou art Kephas. Kephas in Hebrew means a rock. You are like a rock. Thou art Kephas. Kephas means rock or stone. So the Christians translated that into Petros. Petros in Greek means rock or stone. From which you get the word Peter. Peter never heard the word Peter in his life. Believe me. You got to. I want people to come forward and say, no, I'm wrong. I want people to come and correct me. Learned men, come and talk to me. I say, Peter never heard the word Peter in his life. He was Simon Kephas. You translated Kephas into Petros. Kephas means rock or stone. Petros means rock or stone, from which you now derive the word Peter. And that created problems. You translated names of people. Saul translated to Paul. You see, some Saul, if you're a child, you name him, as a Christian, you name him Saul, people think you're a Jew. But if you change that Paul, Saul to Paul, Paul sounds Greek or Roman. See? Yeshua sounds Jewish, 100%. But Jesus, you denationalize him. He's denationalized. Christ, he's denationalized. Messiah is still Jewish. Messiah is still Arabic. This is. So we said, look, you have lost the name Jesus Christ, according to the Holy Quran says, Wa is qala Isa ibn Maryam. Says, Behold, Jesus, the son of Mary, said, Ya bani Israel, O children of Israel, inni Rasulullah ilaykum. So, most certainly, I am the messenger of God sent to you all. Musaddiqal lima bayna yadayya min at tawrati. Confirming the revelation which came before me. Wa musaddiqah. مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَا يَدَيَا مِنَ التَّوَاتِ وَمُبَشِّرًا بِرَسُولٍ يَعْتِي مِنْ بَعْدِ اسْمُهُ أَحْمَدِ And giving you glad tidings of a messenger to come after me whose name shall be Ahmad, which is another name for Muhammad. Muhammad and Ahmad are synonymous terms for this mighty messenger of God. Ahmad, that is what the Quran tells us. But... Christian says, look, it's not, it's not in my book. It's not here. There's no Ahmad and there's no Muhammad. So you are left with no alternative but to analyze what is there. You see, they have a verses in the Bible, in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 16, where it says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth, Jesus says. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I go, I will send him. And when he is come, he will convict the world in respect of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not in me and on and on. 
He says, if I don't go, the comforter will not come unto you. We say that comforter is Muhammad. They says, no. Jesus didn't say Muhammad. He said comforter. We are asking, did Jesus speak English? Did he say comforter? He says, no. He spoke Hebrew. That's his mother tongue. Then he said, what did he say? We haven't got it. In other languages, in the Arabic language, nearest to Hebrew, the same verse reads, Lakinni akulu lakum al haqqu innahu khairul lakum in antalika li allahu illam antalik la yatikum al muazzi walakin in zahabtu ursilhu ilaykum. He used the word muazzi. I said, Did you speak Arabic? He says, No. I said, What did he say? In Afrikaans, the word there is truasta. I said, Did you speak Afrikaans? He says, No. Then what did he say? In Zulu, he says, Um togazi. I said, Did you speak Zulu? You're Jesus. He says, no. I said, what did he say? In 2,000 different languages, you can buy the Bible today. 2,000. And in 2,000 different languages, there are 2,000 different names. What did he say? Did he say, Muazzi? Did he say, Comforter? Did he say, Truster? Did he say, Umtogazisi? What did he say? The Quran says, he said, Ahmad, which is another name for Muhammad. But since you have lost the term, the name is lost. No sense in me pushing it down the throat. He said, look, it was Ahmad, another name for Muhammad. No. Now what we have to do is to reason. We have to deduce. Reason with them. Our Christian brothers and sisters, reason with them. He said, look, you say it is the comforter. Who is the comforter? He said, the comforter is the Holy Ghost. They say, the comforter is the Holy Ghost. So they'll ask you, is Muhammad a ghost? He says, no. So it can't be Muhammad. I said, now what is that Greek word for ghost in your language? Greek word. It's pneuma. Pneuma means spirit. Wherever it suits you, you translate that word, P-N-E-U-M-A, pneuma. As spirit, when it suits you, you translate it as ghost. When you talk about spirit, you can have it fitting Muhammad. But when you say ghost, like a spook, it's very difficult to say Muhammad is a spook. Muhammad was no spook. You know, he was the most solid character in history. This is the difficulty. I will explain what they have done to that word. But they say Holy Ghost. Muhammad is not the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. But there is no such word as ghost in Greek. So Jesus makes it a condition that if I don't go, he won't come. But if I go, I will send him. So if it is the Holy Ghost, we are suggesting that, look, the Holy Ghost was long before Jesus was with the people. According to your Bible, in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 1, we are told that Elizabeth had the Holy Ghost. What it means, I don't know. But she had it before Jesus was born. The Holy Ghost was there. It tells us again that Zechariah had the Holy Ghost. What that means, I don't know. It also says that John the Baptist, Yahya alayhi salam, they call him John. Yahya, we say Yahya. Yahya alayhi salam. He had the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb before he was born. The Holy Ghost was with him in his mother's womb inside. What he was doing inside there, I don't know. But it was there. Look, look, this is what the Bible says. Jesus, when he was preaching and healing, he said, I, by the Spirit of God, do these, these things. I, by the finger of God, cast out devils. Spirit of God is that Holy Ghost. Did the Holy Ghost help him in his ministry? He said, yes. Help him to do, perform miracles? He said, yes. Did the Holy Ghost help his disciples? He said, yes. When they went out on the mission of preaching and healing, with whose help were they preaching and healing, if not with the help of the Holy Ghost? So the Holy Ghost was with Elizabeth, was with Zechariah, with John the Baptist from his mother's womb, was with Jesus, was with the disciples. So it makes no sense to say that if I don't go, he won't come. Condition. But if I go, I will send him. Is something other than the Holy Ghost. And it is simple, basic. Now, how can Muhammad, we can say that this Muhammad. Let's see. The same chapter... Verse 7 it says, 
He says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them. Nah, you haven't got that capacity. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. Spirit of truth. Who is the spirit of truth? Ask the Christian. Is the Holy Ghost. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak from himself, but what things soever shall he hear, that shall he speak. And he shall declare unto you the things that are to come. He shall glorify me. So who is the spirit of truth? They said the Holy Ghost. I said, all right, if this is the Holy Ghost, tell us now, what new things has he given you in the past 2,000 years? He said, Jesus said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. But before we expound this aspect, let me reread to you this verse with a little emphasis on the pronouns. He says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Ah, how be it? When he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak from himself. But what things shall he hear, that shall he speak, and he shall declare unto you the things that are to come, he shall glorify me. Eight masculine pronouns in one verse. I say, it ill befits a ghost. You agree? That is a man, a man, a man, a man. Eight times. There is not another verse in the whole Bible with eight masculine pronouns or eight feminine gender or eight neuter genders. There isn't. This is a unique verse for a unique personality, Muhammad. Man, 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 not a ghost, not a spook. But we are told he's a spirit. Is Muhammad a spirit? I say yes. That's what your Bible says. You see, every time the word spirit is used in your Bible, I'm telling the Christian, it doesn't stand for the Holy Ghost. Because in the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, it, we are told that seven spirits of God went out into the world. I say, you believe in seven Holy Ghosts? He says, no, there's only one Holy Ghost. I said, look, it's a seven spirits. It means it should be seven Holy Ghosts. No, spirit doesn't stand for Holy Ghost every time. Then in the same John, the same John, in the first epistle of John, chapter 5, verse 4, he says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. So false spirit is a false, false prophet is a false spirit. True prophet is a true spirit. The same John is using spirit for a prophet. Don't believe every spirit. Don't believe in every prophet. The spirit, it says, that confesseth that Jesus is the Christ is of God. Means the prophet that says that Jesus is the Christ, is the Messiah, the Messiah is from Allah. That's what John says. I said, well, find out whether this spirit, this prophet, Muhammad, does say that Jesus is the Christ. Open Surah Ali Imran, chapter 3, verse 45. It says, so behold, the angel said, O Mary, inna allaha yubashiruki bi kalimatin minhu, that Allah gives you glad tidings of a word from him. Ismuhul Masih, his name will be the Messiah, translated Christ. Muhammad said, is he the Christ? Yes, that's what every Muslim believes. On the testification of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, 1,000 million Muslims of the world, they believe that Jesus is the Christ. He says, the spirit that confesses, the prophet that says that Jesus is the Christ is of God. Why don't you apply this to Muhammad? And says, St. John, in the Gospel of St. John, he says, he says, he that is born of spirit is spirit, and he that is born of the flesh is flesh. So do spirits beget? Do they prohibit? He says, no. Then how can you be born of spirit? No. Then what it means there is that who is spiritually inclined is spiritual, who is materialistically inclined is flesh. So Jesus says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. So this spirit, this Holy Ghost, if it's the Holy Ghost, every church and denomination claims it. Everybody seems to be in touch, you know, at your beck and call, you press the button and it's there. You ask the Jehovah's Witnesses, he says, yes, we have it. Ask the Roman Catholics, they got it. Ask Brother Jimmy Swaggart, he says, he's got it. Everybody has it. 
All those cults that he mentions in his books, among these 30 books, there's one on cults. You read them, he says, look, the, every cultist says he's got the spirit. Who? The Holy Ghost. Everybody's got it. And they're all going in different directions. So one spirit taking you all into opposite directions from God? No. As Brother Swagat said yesterday, either we are both right or we, are, we can both be wrong. You both can be right. So you have a thousand sects and denomination among the whites of South Africa, among the whites, and 3,000 among the blacks. In America, I was given to understand that you've got 40 different Baptist churches. Each and every one has got the Holy Ghost, the Spirit, and they're all going in different directions. Is it from God? Can it be from God? All going in different directions. All say they are Baptists and everyone has got the Holy Ghost. So I said, you see, this, you haven't got the solution to the problems, answers. Jesus, I have yet many things to say unto you, many. Many in English is more than one. At least you understand that English. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. All is also more than one. I am asking my Christian brethren for the past 40 years. I don't want many solutions. Give me one. That the Holy Ghost gave you in 2,000 years. One. Something that Jesus Christ had not already told you in so many different words. One. Any church, any denomination, any cult, bring me one new thing that the Holy Ghost gave you. And it's not forthcoming. One. I don't want many. Jesus says, ye cannot bear them now. The reason why he didn't give is not because he didn't have it. He had the solution to the problems of mankind. Till doomsday, God gave it to him. But the people were not fit to receive them. That's what he's saying. He's pleading this. Ye cannot bear them now means you haven't got that capacity. And the truth of that statement is writ large in the Bible. Again and again, Jesus Christ, he tells his disciples, ye of little faith, you got no iman. You have no faith. Little faith, if whatever you have is little, tiny. Ye of little faith. Ye of little faith. How many times? Again and again. And he explains to them spiritual truths as he's explaining to little children and they can't understand what he's talking about. So he says, are you even yet without understanding? Yet? And when he's provoked further, he says, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, this is what he's calling his disciples. Not the Jews, the generality of Jews, he called them, you generation of wipers, you whited sepulchers, you wicked and adulterous generation, and on and on. But no, now he's describing his disciples, his own disciples, his chosen ones. He said, oh faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I be with you? I said, if Jesus was a Japanese instead of a Jew, he would have committed that honorable harakiri, suicide. But as a Jew, he couldn't afford to do that. You know, he loved life dearly. He loved life dearly. So he says, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. I said, that spirit of truth is Muhammad. Muhammad is the prophet, we say, as-sadiq al I mean, the prophet who is faithful, truthful, prophet, as-sadiq al I mean, the truthful, the faithful, he is the prophet of truth. 